Hello everyone, my name is Diane Donnelly and I am with the Donnelly Group of Keller Williams Flagship of Maryland. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, I am bringing you this series as a result of questions and concerns and curiosities from my friends, my family, um, and my clients in an effort to help them to make decisions based on facts, not fears, um, and all this craziness with COVID. So today we have the privilege of talking with a friend of mine and a um, insurance agent, Mike Labriola, and he is an advisor with US Health Group and he provides broad choice of flexible solutions that meet each customer's individual needs. He is the health insurance advocate and it makes affordable choices for you for health insurance. Mike, welcome, how are you? Hey, good to see you, fantastic. Good. good. Good to see you. Mike, tell me about your insurance. What do you do? In okay. layman's terms, what do you do? So there, I'll talk about two things on that, that question. So the first thing what I do is um, I talk to people about their, their pre-existing conditions, their health. I talk to them about their income. Um, and then I work with other insurance agents to help people find the right plan. So that's where the advocate part comes in. Um, I personally represent a preferred risk plan. And what a preferred risk plan means is we only underwrite pretty healthy people. So if we only underwrite pretty healthy people, um, our premiums are a lot lower. Um, but I also, I work with my competitors and, and they do the Affordable Care Act. And the Affordable Care Act benefits people who have pre-existing conditions. And right now it's really benefiting people who are being furloughed um, and their income's down. So I help people find the right um, not always mine, but the right insurance plan for that particular person. And I really appreciate that, Mike. You and I off air were talking earlier about the difference between the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare and what you offer. And I wanted to just step back for a second and talk about Obamacare. Um, and if you could, in your words, tell us what Obamacare is, um, because I think that people I was one of them, that when we signed up for health insurance, when we were with the company, we signed up, we, you know, it's just part of the paperwork and you just did it. Um, and I'm not sure that we have a, a good global understanding of what really we're signing up for and if there are alternatives and yours is. So let's take a step back and tell me what Affordable Care Act is. Okay, well, so first of all, you have group health insurance plans. Um, someone who's gonna work for a large company, the government, those are the best plans out there. But then you have the self-employed individuals, they don't have group health insurance, and, and that's what the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare was designed for. Um, now, the benefit of the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare is they have to take you no matter what your pre-existing condition is. So that's great if you, you've got major issues. But on the downside, a healthy person, um, oh, and let me go back one step, and then it also benefits people who are lower income because the government is going to give a subsidy, and maybe your premium is 500, but the government may pay 250 of it. So that's a benefit if you're getting a subsidy. The downside is the healthy person who's not getting a subsidy. Um, the reason is, you know, it's great and it's a good thing, but you're 50 years old and you're healthy. You're paying the same premium as a 50 year old who has Tourette's, um, cancer, is bipolar, and even has another issue, um, but you're paying the same amount. Mm -hmm. um, so when the Affordable Care Act, they came out with mandates and the mandates were that you had to accept anyone no matter what the pre-existing condition is. So my company had been around, there were other companies, we were one of the few who said, we're not going to meet the mandates. So we're not gonna be a part of the Affordable Care Act. And the one mandate was we were a preferred risk plan. A preferred risk means that we're gonna make sure that you don't have cancer, heart attack, stroke, diabetes, the big stuff you can have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, hyper hypothyroid, and they'll write you. Um, so ours is a preferred risk. You have to medically be accepted, but if you are, we can save you, you know, depending on your age, um, 10 to up to 40%. I mean, I'm saving families three, $400 a month. Um, so that's what my plan is. Mine's a preferred risk versus the Affordable Care Act. Does that make sense? Yeah, a hundred percent. So your plan is best designed for somebody that is a little healthier and doesn't have these pre-existing conditions that you were speaking of, the bigger stuff. Someone who doesn't have major pre-existing conditions, our plan is definitely going to be a lot better for them. 
Okay. And what I liked that you said, in addition to all the cool stuff that you're doing, is that um, you would interview somebody. So somebody would say, okay, I need health insurance. You would interview them, make sure that they're a good fit. So you go through the medical history, um, find out if they have any of the big stuff that would disqualify them from your program. And then you would say, okay, and you would do an analysis to say, would Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act um, be more beneficial to you than our program? A absolutely. So I had an interesting one and, and you're constantly learning. And this guy brought up, he said, I really want a bariatric surgery. And I found one care first plan and two Kaiser plans that cover the bariatric surgery um, before the deductible. So there are only three plans out there and they're all in the Affordable Care Act. But to that person, I said, you know what? I said, these are the plans that you want. Here's, here's the person I w work with and he'll definitely take care of you. And then at that point, I push them off. And I said, these are the plans you want to talk about. And then I called my contact and I said, look, um, whoever Donna is going to call you, uh, here's, here's what we were talking about. So here's a little insight and, and you know, help them out. So that's well, I appreciate that. I think that's, I think what you just said is huge that somebody would be um, in maybe in a difficult situation. Look, there are people that need to have cheaper insurance in order to just have an insurance policy. There's people that are in a situation now where their, their income is very low or non-existent. So to be able to go to somebody to have an interview and say, do I fit and how much is it? And if it doesn't fit, that you're willing to work with your competition. And I know this firsthand to be true because I've witnessed it. That is huge. I think that's really important to underscore that you're, you really are not just saying, but you really are looking out to make sure that it is the best fit for a client. I, I love that. We had a, uh, in our discussion earlier, I was talking about a client of mine and we were doing a policy review. Um, her premium went up to $500. She's uh, 52, her children are 19 and 23. Um, so I called her up, her premium was $501. On the Affordable Care Act, her premium would have been 800 and some. So I was already saving her money. But in the conversation, she said, yeah, I was laid off in December. And I said, what? And then she told me her income. I found her a plan on the Affordable Care Act for $46. And then we said, look, add a couple supplementals, add a, 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 a uh, cancer and a hospital supplemental. So if you get cancer, if you're hospitalized, that way it'll protect you from the large deductible and you'll be paying $146 versus 500 on my plan. And, and I said, you know, I bet the last thing you expected in this review was for me to tell you to go get insurance somewhere else. Um, but because she was laid off, financially made sense. Mm -hmm. Do you guys offer PPOs and HMOs? So we're a PPO, um, which is a benefit. The, the Affordable Care Act, you definitely have the choice. You can either be on the HMO or you can be on the PPO. But my particular plan is the Cigna PPO network that we use. And if you don't mind, for those of us who aren't all that well-versed, tell us the difference between a PPO and an HMO. Okay, so it's a preferred provider organization or a health maintenance organization. And usually in the Affordable Care Act, I try to talk people down from the PPO and I talk them down to an HMO. So the major difference is the two basic difference. In HMO, you always have to go to a primary care to go to a specialist. So if you stepped in a hole, you tore your meniscus and, and you kind of knew it, uh, if you had an HMO, you'd have to, have to have your primary care schedule the appointment uh, for you or, or tell you to go into the next doctor. If you had a PPO, you could go directly to a specialist. The other difference is an HMO, you've got to stay within the local network and the local network's pretty much Maryland, a little bit of DC, a little bit of Virginia. A PPO, you can go to Kennedy Krieger in New York if you want to, it doesn't matter. So um, you're on travel, you get hurt, you go to the hospital, you're the PPO, you're fine. That's a whole different subject because okay. if you're on travel and you're, you're injured or you have an accident, the hospital has to accept you under that. And they, they can't take advantage and say, oh, you're in Colorado, you broke your leg skiing, we're just going to stick it to you because you're out of network. They have to recognize you and they have to give you that discount. You're going to get that. But the major difference is if you're in Maryland and you get cancer and you want to go to Kennedy Krieger and you uh, have a PPO, you can. Okay. Um, but I always say to people, I'm like, we live in Maryland. We have some of the best hospitals in the world. Um, and I'll usually, if someone is going to go with the Affordable Care Act, I might get a, a plan that's $800 that's an HMO but that plan could cost me the same plan, $1,600, 
just to say PPO on it. So in Maryland, it's not necessary. It's really not necessary. Uh, yeah. We, we are really lucky to be where we are with all of the hospitals in Baltimore and everything right around us. We're yeah. really lucky. We do, you, do you do insurance only in Maryland? I do not. I'm licensed in 12 states. Um, what so states? Do you, could you know them off the top of I your head? I don't know them all off the top of my head. <laughs> Maryland and the surrounding areas? Virginia, uh, the Carolinas, Ohio. Um, I, do a, I do a bunch. Just kind okay. Of that. So, so at the end, we're going to have a slide. If, if people are curious about your state, they can reach out to you. Is that okay? Well, they can reach out to me because if I'm not, I can, I can help them. I mean, that's what I'm here to Refer do. them to someone that can take care of them. I'm here to help people out. I just helped uh, another person I work with. I'm not licensed in Georgia. So I helped someone out in Georgia through another rep. Um, I'm in Florida. That's a great state too. So. Yes. I hope to be there one day, Mike. <laughs> I'll have to reach out to you when that day comes. Until then, um, what are the deductibles for your program? So our plan is, is totally different. It doesn't have an upfront deductible. It's called an indemnity plan. So an indemnity plan pays so much money per event. So let's say a typical doctor's appointment it costs about $200 to have that appointment. So you would have the appointment, there's, there's no copay. Um, the invoice comes back to our company. The Cigna PPO network discounts usually around 50%. So it's 200, it's now down to 100. So then four times a year for sick visits and four times a year for accident visits, we pay $75. So on the back end, you're gonna pay about $25. Um, so that's an, how an indemnity plan works. I had a kid, he tore his ACL um, on the Affordable Care Act. He would have paid $7,900. He would have been covered. Um, on my plan, he got the in-network discount. We paid up to $400 for the facility, up to $4,000 for the surgery. He walked away paying $2,700 out of pocket. Wow. Um, the big difference between our plan, and there are a ton of indemnity plans that have come out, um, since Trump has been in office. And the reason was, there, and I'm kind of backstepping, when the Affordable Care Act came out, if you didn't get a plan that was part of the Affordable Care Act, or you didn't get health insurance at all, you could be assessed a health care penalty tax of 2.5% of your adjusted gross income. Trump got rid of that. Well, a lot of companies didn't want to worry about that 2.5, so they stayed out of the market. But once he got rid of that, all these other companies popped in and said, I have an indemnity plan. I have an indemnity plan. Um, Philadelphia Life, New York, um, United Health, they have, there are a ton of them. I could go on and on. The difference between my plan, ours is the only one that I'm aware of where we have a major medical type plan that you can bounce over to. What that is important, the key thing is whenever you get insurance, what you need to ask someone is, if I have a major accident, if I'm diagnosed with cancer, what is my maximum out of pocket that I'm going to pay. And Say that again, Mike. What is the maximum out of pocket that I will pay if I get cancer, heart attack, major accident? Our plan, we have a major medical that you roll over to that has a maximum of $4,000 out of pocket. That's it. These other indemnity plans pay $30,000 for, $30, for cancer, $40,000 for a major accident. That's all they pay. So that's very important is to have that major medical type piece attached to it. Do most doctors accept your plan or oh, do yeah. they have to? Is the Cigna, their PPO, do they have to? Cigna PPO network. We're, mm -hmm. we're one of the largest networks in the country. Um, I'll tell you, when I, had your, when I had the PPO, there wasn't a place that I went to that didn't accept it. I run into one doctor. He didn't take anything. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I don't have my insurance plan. And the reason I don't have my insurance plan, I'm lucky I'm married to a teacher and we have the best insurance. Very out. lucky. But we have the Cigna PPO network. So I'm very familiar. I'm in the same network. Um, I had my knee replaced. There was a particular doctor that I, I wanted to go to and had no problems. So the Cigna PPO network is huge, absolutely huge. What about um, if people ha needed mental health care? So, Do you have coverage for mental health? We are not designed for two things. One is mental health and the other one's pregnancy. Um, the pregnancy part is very simple because uh, the Affordable Care Act has open enrollment where they have events. So if you get pregnant in my plan, we keep you, you get pregnant, I can then roll you over to the Affordable Care Act, which is designed for pregnancy. So that's great. 
the mental health piece, we do underwriting. Um, so if you have ADD, ADHD, if you're seeing a psychologist, absolutely, we can write you. Our mind writers will take you. But if you're seeing a psychiatrist, I can't get you underwritten. And um, the reason for that is uh, a lot of the controlled medications for, let's say, bipolar, that's when you go see the psychiatrist. So major mental health mind plan is not designed for that. Okay. Um, if somebody had um, a, let's say that they're on your plan huh? and then they have a situation where they do need to have a mental health visit, um, would you kick them off the plan or would that be some, uh, an, an example of where you would roll them into the Affordable Care Act? We would try our best to roll them over to the Affordable Care Act if we could find an event. Um, they would get the in-network discount but we're just not designed. We don't have an amount to pay uh, for that. So that it's just I, not a good design. Mental health, we're not designed for. We try to stay. With I get that. that. Okay. What about um, Eastern medicine type modalities? So that that's really an interesting question. Um, a few years ago, it was passed that Eastern medicine has to be recognized as a, a regular doctor visit. Um, but that is up to the doctor or who you're seeing. Um, they have to go to the different networks and they have to get approved. Um, there's one that I've run into, they're out in Lutherville and I've got a lot of clients to, that go out to that. It's in Eastern medicine. Um, so yes, absolutely. But they have to go to the network and, and make sure that they're a network. And that's not with my company. That's actually with Cigna or Care First. But yeah, they're now recognized as regular doctor doctors. And that was just changed four or five years ago. Because I never understood why preventative care huh? is frowned upon. So it seemed to me that if I wanted to get my back adjusted or I wanted uh, acupuncture works in my world, I had lots of different acupuncture visits and they took care of things that the medical field would have given me medicine for. I don't want medicine. I want to fix what the problem is. So I don't have to take medicine. So I never really understood the medical field, why they wouldn't, um, or why they frowned on the different modalities that could prevent a future event, mm -hmm. um, which some of these, these Eastern medicine type things, that's what they're doing. It, so the doctor has to go out of his way and go in front of. So I, I had, before my operation, my knee operation, I had old hockey injuries. I was doing dry needling. And um, I was also doing um, electric current they put a current into my my knee and that would get me by for two days um, I was just in so much pain and this particular doctor I found was part of the Cigna PPO network um, so it's becoming more common you're right before no one um, right this was approved it was four or five years I can't remember that they had to be recognized as regular doctor's appointments it was up to the doctor to go out and get the approval if that makes sense Yep, totally. What about like dental insurance and optical insurance? Oh, we do both. Um, so we have dental, we have a PPO, which is a traditional, um, you go in and uh, you have a $50 copay, your, your cleanings are covered. The downside to a traditional dental PPO, and people don't know this, is you have waiting periods. So you can immediately use it for cleaning. Um, let's say you have cavities. You got to wait six months before you can have cavities filled. You've got to wait an entire year before you can have major dental crown work. Um, so there are waiting periods. Then we have another one that's called an HMO or it's a discount, discount plan. Um, the advantage to the discount plan is they don't have waiting periods. Um, another, another disadvantage of the PPOs are they have max that they'll pay per year and they'll either pay 1,000, 1,500 or 2,000. The dental discount programs don't have maximum out of pocket. So if you think about it, you get one crown, you've blown through $1,500. Right. You need another crown, you're paying, you're paying out of pocket because you just maxed that plan out. Um, so sometimes the HMOs or the discount plans are a better way to go. And I, a lot of times tell my clients, I'm like, if you have a dentist that you like, contact your dentist. See if there is a particular discount plan that he likes or more dentists have their own plans because they don't want to lose their clients and they're trying to you know, create a benefit for them to stay with them. Um, right. so, so we do have the dental plans. Um, vision 
who do we use? We use IMED Associates as our network. And it's one of the uh, largest networks for, for uh, uh, opticians uh, for glasses. Another confusion that people have, they say, um, I'm gonna get uh, optical insurance because I might be getting cataracts or um, because my eye pressures are high. That is not optical insurance, that's medical insurance. Optical insurance is only glasses. And a lot of people get confused and they don't get that. Yeah, I, in, in fact, just called an op ophthalmologist and said, I need to get, you know, I haven't had an eye check in, in some time. So I said, you know, it, my insurance isn't going to cover this um, because I don't have optical care. And she told me that it's not optical care, that it would go under my medical policy and that I would have to call the doctor and they would have to say, do it. Yep, that's a medical that visit. a medical event. And a lot of people, do, they call up and they're like, I, I need op I need a uh, eye insurance. I'm like, why? Well, um, I've got to have my pressures checked. Oh, that's, you don't need that. That's covered in your medical insurance. So. See, that's important to know because that's another place to save money. So if, if people don't have that concern that they may have just, instead of getting the optical side and then paying additional premiums for that, they have the medical that is already covering this. So they're really getting this insurance for a reason that doesn't really exist, right? Absolutely. Like these, these are, these are my 50 year old bifocals that I had to start wearing, but I, I don't have any eyesight issues. Um, so they're my yeah. reader. It's great. What about prescriptions? Prescriptions. So the affordable care act doesn't cover anything. The, the, the expensive plans do, but the ones that most people get, they don't cover anything until you pay the deductible. We pay $10 towards prescription. Um, both plans are bad. So the best way is goodrx.com. Is what? Uh, goodrx.com is the best game in town. You can either load the app or you can just save it um, on your, your Google as a bookmark. And as I said, I, I have my insurance through my wife. She's a teacher. We have a $15 copay. I use GoodRx because I can get my prescriptions usually for under $10. So I'm better off using GoodRx than I am using her copay plan. Um, so you just go to goodrx.com, it's free. You type in whatever medication, you put the zip code. Your doctor says you need to get this particular z -pack. You've got bronchitis, you need a z -pack. So you put in z -pack, put your zip code, and it goes out and it shops. And it says, uh, why is this $10? Uh, and usually CVS is more expensive. Um, the uh, Walgreens, usually those places are more expensive. Safeways, Costco, Walmart, but it goes in the shops and it'll say $10 here, $12 here, $15 here. And you just tell your doctor, hey, send it here. You walk up with your phone, you, you click the coupon button, you show it to the person, hand them your phone, they scan it in. That's the cheapest way to go, goodrx.com. And where does medicine get delivered to you? No, you go pick it up. You so you tell your doctor, say, look, send my prescription to a safe way. Sorry about that, someone, my dog. Um, That's okay. Uh, send my prescription to Safeway. So they send it there, you go to pick it up. And when you pick it up, you show them the phone and then they give you the discount. That is the best way. Um, that's how I do it. That's wonderful. Okay. Um, I wanted to open it up for questions. And Mike, how, be, while people are formulating their questions, how has COVID affected the insurance world? Oh, so COVID's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how to say this and come off PC, but... I have never worked so hard and made so little money in my life. Um, and, and the reason I say that is you know, we had the conversation earlier, I do the right thing and I'm getting so many people who have been furloughed and I can get them subsidies. Um, so I look and you know what, they've missed four months of work. So we take away four months of their salary and then, you know, I add whatever they're making with 800 and some dollars for, for unemployment. I add that to it and then we figure out what's their income. And, um, Subsidies are designed for people who are not at a certain level of income. And um, my food service workers, my bartenders, um, I am just left and right getting them huge subsidies. I'm down to $6 a month for a premium. Oh my, um, my person the other, yesterday was $46 a month for her and her two sons. So COVID has really changed, really, really changed how, how things work. Um, you know, we're out there. We've got to do the right thing. We've really got to help people get through this. Um, I feel bad. I've got a lot. Of, our number one clients are self-employed people. That's who. We, and um, I have a ton of small business owners. Um, 
I've got a photo studio. He's 48 years old, went through a divorce two years ago. Um, he, no one's coming into a studio. He's probably losing a studio. His wife's nice enough to say, um, look, don't make the, the, the child payments, support payments right now. We can get by just, it's bad, it's bad. So we're trying to help people save money. Let me throw um, an example by you, Mike. Let's say that there's a family, mom's healthy, son's healthy, um, husband's not healthy. Mm -hmm. Husband has some heart problems, um, had a heart attack pretty recently, say within the last year or so. Um, and they need health insurance. The Let's say the husband got laid off and they need health insurance. Is that a scenario where you would say, okay, let's have the wife and child come to me and the husband go to um, an alternative? Well, first thing, it depends on the family income. So if, so if the family income, the bigger the family, the, the, the higher up, um, their income needs to be, that they can get subsidies. But let's say the husband get laid, gets laid off, he's making 200,000, they're not gonna get a subsidy, right? So I would take the husband, the sick person, and I would put them on the Affordable Care Act and I would put the rest of the family on mine. So okay. great story. I had, um, he's a friend of mine and he, he left jobs um, and his uh, three kids had epilepsy issues. They had, it wasn't epilepsy, but they had seizures. They had seizure issues. And I put each child on the best ACA care first plan at the time had a $500 deductible. And he's like, my kids have two or three of these seizures a year. He said, each one can cost me up to $5,000. He's like, if you're telling me it's a $500 max out of pocket, that's awesome. So I put his three kids on individual ACA plans. And then I put it, the husband and wife in my plan. Their premium was the same. But they weren't paying $5,000 for a seizure. They were paying $500 for a seizure. So that's where they wow. saved the money. Um, so there are a lot of creative creative ways that you can do things. Even if someone goes in the Affordable Care Act, sometimes you look at them and say, well, put the sick person on the better plan and put the healthy people on the cheaper plan. So it, it kind of meets in the middle. Um, and people don't get that, that you can mix and match plans throughout the family. Uh, yeah, that, that's a good takeaway. Angie, are there any people that have any questions on the um, chat? Uh, no questions on chat or Facebook yet. Okay. Um, Doug says, thank you, Mike. Great information. We'll be in touch. Um, so here's my takeaway. One, Obamacare was designed sort of to allow everyone to be have access to insurance. Um, that's the good part. The bad part is um, the people that were healthy and working with at higher income levels may have had a higher premium as a result of subsidizing the folks who didn't have the money to be able to have health insurance, right? That Correct. sums that piece up. Okay. The second part is um, there are alternatives to paying very high insurance rates and high deductibles and research that, right? And they can call you in order to help you to do that. Three, you can split up insurances within the family. I think that's really important to know that because I think that people think, okay, let's go as a family and this is the insurance option that we have. And as a family, this is the, the option that we have. So I love to hear that. And I think that it's really important to understand and to take away the fact that there are options, there just simply are options available. And if you have been furloughed or laid off or um, let go, that there are people that you can call to make things more affordable. And maybe this is a temporary move, right, Mike? Is there, if, if people have a challenge right now and they're out of work and they join your program or a program that you have, um, designed to make them save money and then they get a job that's paying more and they have an insurance policy um, option that is better or cheaper or um, has more coverages is that something that they can leave that program and come on or is there a contract there's a year you have to be on it or anything like that no so it's federal law that you can cancel an insurance policy at any time it's federal law um, right now i'm designing my plans not how i like them but how they fit the client. Um, so I'm giving people a stripped down plan, but it has that maximum out of pocket. If something big and bad happens to them, a $4,000, that's the most important thing right now. Um, but typically I like to build a plan and then you add an accident supplemental. 
So if you have an accident, once your bill goes over $2,500, we give you 5,000. So it protects you from the max out of pocket. It also, I've used it for a couple torn meniscus, torn rotator cuff, kid falling off of a um, playground, a kid doing jujitsu. So it helps them for physical therapy, it protects them. The second thing I like is critical illness. And where critical illness is important is, I'm a great example. I have a $30,000 critical illness. My wife's a teacher. Um, she doesn't get paid in the summertime. So if I'm diagnosed in June or July with cancer, I'm kind of up the creek. And I've got an 11 year old and two nine year olds. So the 30,000 critical illness pays me off so I can pay my mortgage, my day to day expenses, my car expenses. And that covers me for a few months until I can access other funds that I have. Um, so that's how I like to build a plan to protect someone. But right now I'm just saying, look, this is a short term plan. We're just trying to protect you from that max out of pocket. We're not really looking at this as a, a full term because you're going to go back to work in three months. Um, so we're looking at protecting their assets with the max out of pocket, but something that they can afford during tough times. And you bring up a good point, Mike, and maybe this is the same answer as what you just said, but if somebody signs up now and their circumstance change during the year, huh? they have an event or something um, that doesn't disqualify them from your program. Can they change programs within? So, so let's say that they wanted to add a supplemental, um, I don't know what it's called, a supplemental. Supplemental, I'm sure. Right. Can they do that as within the year or do they have to yeah. wait until open but enrollment? My plan, and, and some people right now, we're backing off a little bit. So we're pulling the supplementals away um, just because times are tight. But we plan on three or four months adding them back on so we can protect them. I mean, right, right now, it's just a lot of people, it's just getting by. It's, it's surviving. We're in survival. A lot of people are in survival mode. I need to do anything that I can to hold on to what I have, right? Yeah. They've got children they've got to protect. So if I can knock off $100 a month, you know, for an individual, if I can knock off $200 a month, $300 a month for a family, that's what we're doing. And we're, we're bringing it down to a bare bones plan. But again, that most important thing is if they're in a major accident, if they are diagnosed with cancer, it's a $4,000 max out of pocket. That's why you need insurance. It's not, okay. I was talking about 26 year old males, hardest kid to talk to. Um, why do you get car insurance? Do you, do you get it for the oil change? No. You get it for the ding, no. So you're getting it for the big bad accident, right? Well, that's why you get health insurance. Yeah. Um, for the big bad accident or illness. You know, I think I think a couple of years ago, Mike, you and I talked about this, but there was a friend of my brother's who was young, healthy male, and um, worked out, ate right, very just very healthy. He went to a restaurant and got food poisoning. He didn't have insurance. He was in between jobs. That almost put him under. Food poisoning, not a bad car accident, not the, the cancer that he knew he wouldn't get, not the bad heart because he knew he was eating healthy. None of the things that he anticipated that could have happened, none of those things, food poisoning, that can happen to anybody at any time. Something so um, benign in, in, in a regular world could have put him under. He said the medical bills, what he had to pay because he was laid up, I mean, it was a bad, bad thing. Um, and he was laid up in the hospital for a while and he had no coverage. How did he pay it off? I have no idea. I have no idea. I just heard that story later in, you know, several years later. Um, but it, it was a bad situation for him. My brother said it almost, it almost bankrupt him. Yeah. So my, my story, and you got to have stories, my story to people is so my dad played football for Maryland, was drafted by the Bears, played a little bit of semi-pro for the Senators, healthy as could be. He drank a beer here and there. Um, smoked a cigar once a month and at age 51 came down with cancer and died in, in six months. Well, he had insurance. And my story is if he didn't, those hospitals would have taken my mom's house. They would have taken the condo. Um, hospitals are there to help, but they also have bills. Mm -hmm. and they're a business. You need. Don't confuse them. Yourself. They're a business. Yep. You need to protect your assets. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't, and I have talked to a couple 50 some they, they seem like they're smart people, but they can't be because they say, oh, I'm, I'm going to self-insure. And I just look at it and say, what about your assets? What if something, so they, they can't be that smart, but um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're crazy not to yeah. max out of pocket. That's what you need to talk to people about. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mike, I appreciate you. I appreciate you because of what you do. And I appreciate you, especially just for being real. I appreciate you for doing the right thing 
even if it's not for your commission. So thank you for that. Thank you for being who you are. And if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Um, there you go. It's on the screen. Yeah. Um, but, Best way uh, is, is by phone or email, Mike? Either way, phone. I'm, I'm a very personal person. This has kind of been challenging for me because I like to sit down and explain and make sure people know their options. The number one people, the number one reason why people hate their health insurance is because they don't understand it and they don't know how to use it properly. And I always tell my clients, I'm like, put my phone number in your phone because if you're going to have something done, I want to know what it is because I might be able to change plans on the fly. I might be able to protect you. Um, but yeah, phone. Phone is always, that's the best way. I, I always answer it. Um, even on vacation, I always answer my phone. Fantastic. 410-707-7892. Mike Lapriola. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Thanks for everything and um, see you soon. You Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. You too.